Hi everybody, welcome again to a, another session of uh, Yeshiva Classroom where we give you the basic concepts uh, of Judaism in a uh, very informative uh, of, uh, uh, of, of, a, of a system, of an educational system here that we have uh, on uh, TV uh, throughout the uh, Long Island area of um, Fios and on Optimum Online. Uh, we're also in Queens County and uh, also on YouTube, YouTube channel Yeshiva Classroom. So if you like the program and you want to refer it to some other people, please do so. So uh, basically I have a picture here of uh, the Aron, the Ark, uh, the Ark which uh, contains the uh, two uh, tablets of the Ten Commandments, the only physical object that was ever given to man by God, right? And that was given um, on Mount Sinai, right? Uh, Moshe went up to the mountain and he uh, was given the tablets uh, that was hewn out from stone uh, with uh, the uh, inscription of the Ten Commandments. And, of course, um, when he came down uh, and he saw the people transgressing uh, with the golden calf, uh, he broke those, um, those tablets and uh, asked forgiveness, uh, prayed at the bottom of, of the mountain, and uh, God uh, forgave him. Uh, and uh, he uh, was asked to come up, but this time he had to hone his own two tablets, but God uh, would inscribe the Ten Commandments in the um, tablets that Moshe, uh, our, our, our Rabbeinu, our teacher, uh, brought up. To the, to the mountain, that was on Mount Sinai. And this is a picture of the ark which is described in a book of Exodus, one of the five books of Moses, uh, and how it was made uh, of sheet and wood and then uh, uh, layered with gold, uh, what have you. And uh, they had the two keruvim, the angelic features of uh, these uh, two uh, symbols uh, with the uh, wings outspread and through the opening between the two angelic uh, angels the, the figurines the, uh, the voice of God came the voice sounding like a, a, a man but it was the voice of God and that voice came down through and in between those figurines into the throat of, of Moses, right into his throat and he spoke them through his throat which was actually God speaking and by Dabra Hashem El Moshe, and God spoke to Moshe, saying, So in the first four books of the Bible, God spoke through the mouth of Moses. And on the fifth in the fifth book, Deuteronomy, God like he did with other prophets, gave the word to Moses and he was told to d deliver the, the uh, words, uh, commandments, and directives that he had spoken to, to Moses. And, and this happened like uh, on chapter 19. Uh, one should always get a, a good Bible, not the one uh, that you find in a hotel room, but a, a translation uh, from uh, the... Uh, Holy Scriptures by Jewish authors, because many of the words are, you're not going to find uh, translated correctly 
uh, by Gentile uh, transcribers and um, uh, and others, but uh, you can get uh, an art scroll, and that's something that one should should have an art scroll, uh, Torah, uh, the 24 written books of the Bible. It's in one uh, in one book, right? Torah, five books of Moses, uh, Nisim, uh the books of the prophets, and Tesuvah, and many other uh, writings. Total 24 books, right? So here we have the the ark, and in the ark uh, was the two tablets, and also the original Torah that was. Five books of Moses that was trans that was dictated to God through Moses, and he wrote them, and he wrote them down, and he gave one to each of the twelve tribes, right? Gave one to each of the uh, twelve tribes. The Talmud goes into detail. This is a uh, the uh, scroll of the five books of Moses and the Talmud goes into detail as to where they were placed in this uh, ark, right? You had the two, the two tablets and uh, the, uh, the transcribed original uh, transcribed uh, five books of Moses all in this ark and there were two poles one on each side, where the men could carry it, Levium, who were uh, in charge of the area uh, that the uh, Kohenim, uh, the priests, um, uh, performed their, their services. Uh, and, you know, an interesting uh, note is that when, if you look in Deuteronomy, you should write these, these numbers down because then you can check them up. But if you look in Deuteronomy, Right? Uh, all these words uh, that I am giving to you were, were given at Mount Sinai and uh, at the 40 years traveling uh, throughout the desert before they came to the land of Canaan, which was later known uh, as Israel, which God gave to the Jewish people. Right? And I am the first commandment, I am the Lord your God. Right? I am the Lord your God, the God of the B'nai Israel, and that is what we should cherish because uh, we uh, are uh, children of, of God, the special uh, service that uh, we were chosen for, and the first commandment attests to that because I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, from the house of bondage. God is able to... Uh, exert himself and do things miraculously uh, so that uh, the Jews would be um, continuously uh, with a strong belief as they lived uh, throughout these uh, times where uh, all the Jews, not just a handful, but all the Jews saw these miraculous events, whether it was the cloud of glory which accompanied them uh, at all during the 40 years, whether it was the splitting of the Yam Suf of, of the Sea of Reeds, where the Jewish people walked through and their enemies uh, were destroyed when they attempted to follow, whether it was the manna, right, the manna, M-A-N-N-A, -N -N -A, which the Jewish people ate uh, during the 40 years that they traveled in the land of, 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 of uh, the desert, in the wilderness, so all these things were miraculously given and to the Jewish people and as a result so that we cannot and will not forget these miraculous events we say them every day during our prayers we acknowledge we remember all the good deeds and uh, the observant uh, uh, realize that uh, to the degree in which they are knowledgeable in observance uh, of, of, the, of the Torah uh, when they say their prayers 
uh, every day. We acknowledge the greatness and the miraculous event that uh, he performed for, for us and our forefathers uh, throughout the generations and uh, to acknowledge that he is our God and uh, we will always uh, serve him. Because when they came out of Egypt, God came to them and he said to them that you saw, this is in chapter 19 in the book of Exodus, you saw all the abomination in Egypt and how I, I transported you on wings of eagles, on wings of eagles. In other words, and no one could harm them because no one flies higher than the eagle. And that's where he carries his young. In this case, the B'nai Yisrael, they, he protected them as they left Egypt. And he told them that if you keep the covenant and follow the directives that I command you, then you will be a kingdom of Kohanim, a kingdom of priests meaning that all of you, all the B'nai Israel, will, will follow the particulars and learn the dictates uh, of, the, uh, of the teachings that were given at Sinai and in which we uh, involve ourselves today so that it is one way in which we, we love Hashem, right? And it says, you should love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Well, it's a difficult concept to love an entity which has no form. But right after that it says, And these words, how do you love Hashem? With these words, with these words of the Torah that uh, you will be given. So, God told that to Moses. He says, tell the people that uh, if they follow the dictates of, the, of my teaching, they will be a chosen people, a treasured people. It uses the word treasure. Treasured people above all nations. Look at chapter 19 in Exodus. Right? It will be a, you will be a treasured people. And the Jews answered in unison, Nasa, we shall do. We shall do. And they answered, we, and to the effect that they who are married and have dependents uh, and as the head of household will see to it that his household, his dependents, are also believers and, and will do uh, the dictates that are will be taught to the Jewish people by Moses. So, God heard this cry in unison, not to, uh, not to, to inspect the, uh, what the Torah says, but uh, on mass, we, we shall do, right? First person, plural, is shall, we shall, we shall do, um, and God, if you look at 19.9 in Exodus, write it down, 19.9, God came down in the thickness of a cloud and spoke to Moses that the people should believe forever. Again, God came down in the thickness of cloud and spoke to Moses that the people should hear that they will be a treasured people forever and believed that there is a God because they heard this sound speaking to Moses. So they got the Ten Commandments and this time Moses was accepted uh, and God forgave him, and he came down from the mountain on the tenth day of the month of Tishrei, which is the day of Yom Kippur, the day of atonement, that we ask for forgiveness for our sins, just like Moses uh, brought down uh, the tablets, right? It's, no, it's not coincidental that Yom Kippur 
It's the Day of Atonement that the Jewish people were forgiven at Mount Sinai. But throughout our generations, we ask yearly and also monthly to forgive us for the transgressions that, that we have, have done. And just to backtrack a little bit, you know, if you look in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 14, it says over there that not only the teachings of the Ten Commandments did God give the Jewish people at that time, but they were taught at that time and during the 40 years, Torah, which Moses learned from God and he disseminated amongst the 12 tribes who were there around and camped before the mountain and throughout the journeys into the wilderness. So we have a strong uh, a feeling, an ingrained natural ability to understand that there is a God and unfortunately uh, we, uh, many of us are not as strong as we should be in keeping these uh, directives and commandments that were divinely given. But many are. But realize that everyone has that special affinity uh, for divinity and spirituality and the belief in God. God implanted that especially among the Jewish people. He implanted, implanted that feeling of spirituality and godliness. But unfortunately, the evil inclination, whose job it is to fight uh, what is right, uh, uh, and the atheistic Gentiles and their, and their emphasis on quote-unquote, entertainment and relaxation uh, without uh, mentioning the, the true God but uh, into falsifications of, of nothingness, uh, a pursuit of wasting time. And as a result, many of our followers, many of the Jewish people throughout the ages have gone astray. Now we look at the Haredim uh, who want to stay away from, from all of these uh, Gentile um, uh, activities uh, which uh, are, are not helpful to the soul and lead us further and further astray. So they sort of ghettoize themselves and their school system is such that they emphasize learning Torah and Talmud, which is the oral explanation of the Torah, which is laced throughout the Talmud in many different ways, right? Laced throughout the Talmud in, ver in very many different um, types of uh, discussions that are, are brought down. And being that it became too cumbersome uh, to teach orally one generation to the next generation, they wrote the uh, Talmud, uh, first the Mishnah, uh, in, in, in writing, uh, and that was um, uh, compiled uh, by uh, Judah Hanasa, Hanasi in the year 70 Common Era, right? The Jews speak of um, not A.D. and uh, uh, the, uh, the year of our Lord because the Christian God is not our God so we don't use the word AD but we use uh, the term before common era and, and CE common era right common era CE CE and BCE before the common era Okay, in other words, the common era beginning at year one, uh, which is the uh, Gentile uh, man-god that uh, we have uh, no allegiance or belief in. So here we are, 
Uh, and we have to understand that this uh, ark traveled with the Jewish people, traveled with the Jewish people throughout uh, the uh, 40 years in the desert, in the portable Mishkan, the portable tabernacle. And that was uh, how, and in that housing uh, was the um, divided into two sections, the Holy and the Holy of Holies, which this remained in the Holy of Holies throughout the time, except of course when I travel, uh, no one could look at this uh, being packed uh, with uh, a cloth and uh, only uh, the certain family of the Levian did this work. Others took down the walls of the, of the Mishkan and others had other chores. But uh, the Talmud goes into how they packed uh, the, uh, the Holy of Holies, uh, etc. So that's interesting. And that Ark and the Mishkan, uh, and then the Ark which is in the Mishkan, also contained the altar. Altar is a, uh, the ramp and uh, the uh, platform on the top of the ramp uh, where uh, one is to bring offerings uh, for uh, different types of, of directives. Uh, for instance, uh, an Ola symbolizing uh, his entire body uh, is uh, tuned into the, the belief of God and the entire offering goes up uh, as a burnt offering. Uh, the uh, parts are displayed so that uh, uh, one should realize that uh, uh, all his limbs are, are, are for God. And, and chatos is another offering, a sin offering, uh, and these uh, are uh, laid out with different limbs uh, to show uh, how we um, transgressed and asked forgiveness. So that is a little bit about the ark and what happened was it was in the wilderness for 40 years and then when they crossed over the Jordan River, Moses of course was not allowed to go over to the, over the Jordan River but he, had, he was directed to go up into the mountain and look over the Jordan River uh, where he can see the beautiful land of Israel which was watered by um, fountains and, and brooks and running streams at that time and later on uh, because of transgressions they were taken away and we had to rely more on the natural rainfall but it's interesting to note that Moses went up to look at the entire land but actually he could not have seen the entire land of Israel from one point but it's to teach us that we are to use all of our God-given ability uh, when we uh, do a particular uh, um, work or, or uh, directive uh, to use our, our God-given abilities uh, even though everything is from God. Everything is from God. And you know, as a farmer plants the, um, the seed and the seed grows and he has to fertilize it, and he wheat, and he, and he, and he, and he harvests it, and uh, winnows it, and does everything, and he, and he, to produce the, the loaf of bread. But everything was from God. But you get the commandment, you get the merit of doing all the different chores that God brings out. That's a, a very difficult concept, uh, and it, and it, it can be shown in many facets of our life uh, that, uh, uh, that we work at and even though we have to uh, do everything to uh, be successful in our work or our business, nevertheless God predicts what your income and reward will be for doing the work. So that's a, that's a concept that we always have to have a bear in mind that God is the one who directs 
our um, our action, so to speak, and is the one who finalizes what will happen. But we have to go go through the different chores, the different motions, uh, to earn merit, and, and that at this all the time uh, thinking of. Uh, uh, of the fact that God is the one uh, who brings success. And, and just to backtrack a little bit more, it says you should love the Lord your God and how she, with all your whole, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. And that means when you're, for instance, doing some chore, whether it's at work or, or at home, and uh, when the uh, thoughts of your children or your loved one enter your mind and creep into your mind unexpectedly because you love them so much. That's how uh, we should have God enter our thoughts and our mind all the time to, uh, to believe that He is with us all the time and therefore we should act accordingly. So here we are. This is part of the Mishkan. This is, I have all these pictures here but uh, they're not uh, so readily handed Hand, handy to show you. Uh, I have to be digging through all these things. Uh, th these, this is a picture of of the of the ark. It gives the dimensions over here. Uh, it, here uh, is the golden uh, cover, and then you have uh, a golden uh, ark put into a uh, wooden ark, which is then put into a, a, the golden ark and the, uh, the poles, right? So here we have the ark. And it was, what? The ark was, the, the ark went with the people. When the cloud moved, when the cloud moved, the encampment of Jews moved. And they had to pack up the, the, the ark and all the other artifacts in the in the holy portable temple. Now, it existed for 40 years in the in the desert, actually 39, uh, because they didn't get it right away. Uh, but uh, after that, they crossed the Jordan River, and the ark went with them, and it was placed in an area of Gilgal uh, during Joshua's time. Uh, 14 years, and then it was uh, placed in a sheet in the, in the temple of Shiloh, S H I L O H, uh, which I believe is uh, now uh, in in Arab controlled areas of Israel, um, Shiloh, and it stood for 369 years in Shiloh. And what happened was, uh, during that time, the Jews had gone astray, and uh, they um, were uh, constantly harassed by uh, by the Philistines. And th this is found in, in the Tanakh and in, in the Bible, uh, the other books of the Bible, right? Uh, uh, right. So uh, in the book of of uh, uh, let's see what that Joshua is, there's Joshua and then there's um, after jo the judge excuse Joshua then judges and then book of judges and after that uh, came uh, the book of Samuel and the book of Kings right but we don't number them like the Gentiles number their books because you only have one book of Kings and one book of Samuel right uh, into that 24 total. So what happened? They were 369 years and they lost the ark. They went to battle. Uh, it's unsure, the Talmud's not sure as to uh, if the original ark uh, of the broken tablets uh, that were contained there was also in the Holy of Holies or the, uh, or the ark that contained uh, the uh, whole tablets, but anyway, it was uh, it was lost in the war, and Eli, the priest, 
heard of this from a messenger, and uh, he was uh, stricken. Uh, his daughter-in-law uh, was um, at that time given birth, and, and she named her child Ichabod. I have lost my uh, my uh, my glory uh, as the uh, ark was taken away, and it was brought into the temple and, and brought before their idol god Dagon, right? And Dagon fell on his face and uh, broke his limbs uh, before the ark, and uh, they, they, all kind of bad things happened to the Philistines. So they transferred it to another Philistine city, and they had the same problem, and they say, we must get rid of it, so they put it on a on a, on a, a wagon uh, drawn by two milking calves, and uh, they disregarded their um, their uh, young calves, and these two oxen went directly to Beit Shemesh, and the Jews were so enthralled that they couldn't believe they had the ark back, and. Uh, it goes into details, but it, it, had, it had no temple to go to because Shiloh was no longer in existence. So they made another portable temple, uh, which was again Gilgal, then Nov, and Gibeon, which a total of 57 years when David uh, took the uh, ark from, from one of the homes in, in which it was... Um, in, in which it was stored during this time and as a result he uh, and the people uh, came uh, to Jerusalem where he bought a, 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 a pack of land and his son Solomon was the one that uh, built the, the temple, the first temple and it lasted 410 years 410 years and, and he worked with the king of, of, of Lebanon, uh, and it goes into detail, whatever. But the point is that the book of Joshua was 14 years in duration, seven years conquering the land that was given to them by, by uh, uh, God, and in conjunction with a lottery. And the land was... Uh, divided and brought into was brought into um, the different tribes where, where they uh, where, where they uh, lived and here is a picture of uh, the uh, tribes and you see that uh, the land how it was divided into di different tribes and this is a this is the Jordan River here this is the Jordan River and uh, the two and a half tribes of uh, uh, God, uh, Reuven, God, and the half tribe of Anasha occupied this land over here, and uh, the Jewish uh, tribe uh, was given a land way up into Lebanon. It was actually Lebanese uh, that lived there now, but uh, they, uh, that land uh, uh, belongs to uh, the uh, children of Israel someday. Uh, we don't know how it'll work out, but uh, it'll c come back and the tribes will uh, return. And these are some of our, our heroines that believe in this theory that uh, the, uh, the West Bank is uh, liberated territory. It's not occupied. And these are the mothers, the heroines, who live in this liberated territory that was given by God, and they'll protect themselves with guns and rifles need be, and no one will take it away from them. And it's a miracle that, that President Trump has such a, a warm eye uh, for the Jewish people based on the fact that uh, God is the one who, who controls the world, and unfortunately we, most or many, are not deserving of, of the miracles that, that God uh, has sent through different emissaries. 
So we have to realize that we uh, were given that land because the Torah delineates the boundaries of Israel. All the people, so many people are observant, yet do they follow the Torah? Look at Numbers chapter 33, 1. Uh, it delineates uh, the, uh, uh, the boundaries of, of, uh, of the God-given land. And uh, it was given to the Jewish people by God. And, and it was promised to them by God. If you look in the Bible, Genesis 17.7, it, 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 God promises it to Abraham. Uh, Genesis uh, 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 26, uh, 26, 3. 26, 3. He promises the land to Abraham's son Isaac. Look at 28, thir 13. 28, 13. He promises the same land to Jacob. And you see, we have the land today. Look, the Christians and the Muslims had their paws all over the, all over that land in, in, after World War II of 1947. And, and they sent their armies and, and a tag, ragtag band of, of Jews led by Hashem kicked them out. One billion Christians and one billion Muslims. And God, through this handful of people, declared a Jewish state. So we have to remember that God is always in our midst. And unfortunately, we have to educate our people. And it's a, such a difficult chore because, first of all, the observant and, and uh, the uh, half-observant people would, uh, would claim their, themselves as denominations, even though there's no such thing as denominations in Judaism. It's not a it's not a restaurant where you can pick and choose, and and, and making people feel happy that uh, they, a person calls himself a rabbi, and therefore I give you permission to do this, which is, is clearly prohibited on the Sabbath, for instance. You might feel better because someone gave you the permission to ride on the Sabbath. Well, I'm going to the synagogue. But the point is, the ruling is that no one is allowed to drive on the Sabbath. Move your place of residence closer to a synagogue. And uh, that's how important the Oral Torah is, not based on their, on their philosophy, uh, that uh, they uh, look at the mores and, and times of the 21st century and, and place that into uh, perspective uh, of uh, those people that uh, are not observant and want to feel as though uh, they didn't do anything wrong. They didn't do anything wrong. Well, listen, I mean, this is a, a free country. But God supersedes all the directives when it comes to uh, doing work and not doing work on the Sabbath. And what is considered doing work. Not what these uh, uh, Mickey Mouse rabbis uh, uh, tell you. Because the Orthodox of, uh, rabbis have studied these texts, have studied the Gemaras, have looked for precedents. In, in determining what is the correct way and, and not coming out with any, anything that may sound as though it is permissible when it is not. Look, we have, we have a, a Bible and the Oral Torah is, is a part and parcel of the Bible. Look, Deuteronomy 12.21 I, you should slaughter your animals as I commanded you. You should slaughter your animals as I commanded you. Don't tell me it's USDA in a fancy restaurant, it's okay to eat that in 
We're not in the desert. We didn't have refrigeration. That's poppycock. You're not allowed to eat non-kosher food. Food, animals that have been slaughtered, not according to halacha. So the Torah says, you should slaughter your animals as I commanded you. When Moses was in the desert, look at Numbers 29. Hi everybody, welcome again to a, another session of uh, Yeshiva Classroom where we give you the basic concepts uh, of Judaism in a, a very informative uh, type of, uh, uh, of, a, of a system, of an educational system here that we have uh, on uh, TV uh, throughout the uh, Long Island area of um, Fios and on Optimum Online. Uh, we're also in Queens County and uh, also on YouTube, YouTube channel Yeshiva Classroom. So if you like the program and you want to refer it to some other people, please do so. So uh, basically I have a picture here of uh, the Aron, the Ark, uh, the Ark which uh, contains the uh, two uh, tablets of the Ten Commandments, the only physical object that was ever given to man by God, right? And that was given um, on Mount Sinai, right? Uh, Moshe went up to the mountain and he uh, was given the tablets uh, that was hewn out from stone uh, with uh, the uh, inscription of the Ten Commandments. And, of course, um, when he came down uh, and he saw the people transgressing uh, with the golden calf, uh, he broke those, um, those tablets and uh, asked forgiveness, uh, prayed at the bottom of, of the mountain, and uh, God uh, forgave him. Uh, and uh, he uh, was asked to come up, but this time he had to hone his own two tablets, but God uh, would inscribe the Ten Commandments in the um, tablets that Moshe, uh, our, our, our Rabbeinu, our teacher, uh, brought up. To the, to the mountain, that was on Mount Sinai. And this is a picture of the ark which is described in a book of Exodus, one of the five books of Moses, uh, and how it was made uh, of sheet and wood and then uh, uh, layered with gold, uh, what have you. And uh, they had the two keruvim, the angelic features of uh, these uh, two uh, symbols uh, with the uh, wings outspread and through the opening between the two angelic uh, angels, the, the figurines, the, uh, the voice of God came. The voice sounding like a, a, a man, but it was the voice of God, and that voice came down through and in between those uh, figurines into the throat of, of Moses, right into his throat, and he spoke them uh, through his throat, which was actually God speaking. And by Dabra Hashem El Moshe, and God spoke to Moshe, saying, So in the first four books of the Bible, God spoke through the mouth of Moses. And on the fifth in the fifth book, Deuteronomy, God like he did with 
other prophets gave the word to Moses and he was told to g deliver the the uh, words, commandments, and directives that he had spoken to to Moses, and and this happened like uh, on chapter 19. Uh, one should always get a, a good Bible, not the one uh, that you find in a hotel room, but a a translation uh, from uh, the uh, Holy Scriptures by Jewish authors because many of the words uh, you're not going to find uh, translated correctly uh, by Gentile uh, transcribers and um, uh, and others. But uh, you can get uh, an art scroll and that's something that one should, should have, an art scroll uh, Torah, uh, the 24 written books of the Bible. It's in one uh, in one book, right? Torah, five books of Moses, uh, Nesim, uh the books of the prophets, and Tesuvah, and many other uh, writings. Total twenty-four books, right? So here we have the the ark, and in the ark uh, was the two tablets, and also the original. Torah that was five books of Moses that was trans that was dictated to God through Moses and he wrote them and he wrote them down and he gave one to each of the twelve tribes right gave one to each of the uh, twelve tribes. The Talmud goes into detail. This is the, uh, the uh, scroll of the five books of Moses. And the Talmud goes into detail as to where they were placed in this uh, ark, right? You had the two, the two tablets and uh, the, uh, the transcribed, the original uh, transcribed uh, five books of Moses, all in this ark. And there were two poles, one on each side, where the men could carry it. Levium, who were uh, in charge of the area uh, that the uh, Kohanim, uh, the priests, um, uh, performed their, their services. Uh, and, you know, an interesting uh, note is that when, if you look in Deuteronomy, you should write these, these numbers down because then you can check them up. But you look in Deuteronomy, right? Uh, all these words uh, that I am giving to you were, were given at Mount Sinai and uh, at the 40 years traveling uh, throughout the desert before they came to the land of Canaan, which was later known uh, as Israel, which God gave to the Jewish people, right? And I am the first commandment, I am the Lord your God, right? I am the Lord your God, the God of the B'nai Israel, And that is what we should cherish because uh, we uh, are uh, children of, of God, a special uh, service that uh, we were chosen for. And the first commandment attests to that because I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, from the house of bondage. God is able to uh, exert himself and do things miraculously uh, so that uh, the Jews would be uh, continuously uh, with a strong belief as they lived uh, throughout these uh, times where all the Jews, not just a handful, but all the Jews saw these miraculous events whether it was the cloud of glory which accompanied them uh, uh, all during the 40 years, whether it was the splitting of the Yam Suf of, of the Sea of Reeds, where the Jewish people walked through and their enemies uh, were destroyed when they attempted to follow, whether it was the manna, right, the manna, M-A-N-N-A, -N -N -A, which the Jewish people ate uh, during the 40 years that they traveled 
in the land of, 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 of uh, the desert, in the wilderness. So all these things were miraculously given and to the Jewish people. And as a result, so that we cannot and will not forget these miraculous events, we say them every day during our prayers. We acknowledge, we remember all the good deeds and uh, the observant uh, uh, realize that uh, to the degree in which they are knowledgeable in observance uh, of, of, the, of the Torah, uh, when they say their prayers uh, every day, we acknowledge the greatness and the miraculous events that uh, he performed for, for us and our forefathers uh, throughout the generations and uh, to acknowledge that he is our God and uh, we will always uh, serve him. Because when they came out of Egypt, God came to them and he said to them that you saw, this is in chapter 19 in the book of Exodus, you saw all the abomination in Egypt and how I, tr I transported you on wings of eagles, on wings of eagles. In other words, and no one could harm them because no one flies higher than the eagle. And that's where he carries his young, in this case the Bnei Yisrael, they, he protected them as they left Egypt. And he told them that if you keep the covenant and follow the directives that I command you, then you will be a kingdom of Kohanim, a kingdom of priests meaning that all of you, all the Bnei Israel, will, will follow the particulars and learn the dictates uh, of, the, uh, of the teachings that were given at Sinai and in which we uh, involve ourselves today so that it is one way in which we, we love Hashem, right? And it says, you should love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Well, it's a difficult concept to love an entity which has no form. But right after that it says, And these words, how do you love Hashem? With these words, with these words of the Torah that uh, you will be given. So, God told that to Moses. He says, tell the people that uh, if they follow the dictates of, the, of my teachings, they will be a chosen people, a treasured people. It uses the word treasure. Treasured people above all nations. Look at chapter 19 in Exodus. Right? It will be a, you will be a treasured people. And the Jews answered in unison, Nasa, we shall do. We shall do. And they answered, we, and to the effect that they who are married and have dependents uh, and as the head of household will see to it that his household, his dependents are also believers and, and will do uh, the dictates that are will be taught to the Jewish people by Moses. So, God heard this cry in unison, not to, uh, not to, to inspect the, uh, what the Torah says, but uh, on mass, we, we shall do, right? First person, plural is shall, we shall, we shall do, um, and God, if you look at 19.9 in Exodus, write it down, 19.9, God came down in the thickness of a cloud and spoke to Moses that the people should believe forever. Again, God came down in the thickness of cloud and spoke to Moses that the people should hear that they will be a treasured people forever and believed that there 
is a God because they heard this sound speaking to Moses. So they got the Ten Commandments and this time Moses was accepted uh, and God forgave him and he came down from the mountain on the tenth day of the month of Tishrei which is the day of Yom Kippur, the day of atonement that we ask for forgiveness for our sins just like Moses uh, brought down uh, the tablets, right? It's no, it's not coincidental that Yom Kippur is the Day of Atonement that the Jewish people were forgiven at Mount Sinai. But throughout our generations, we ask yearly and also monthly to forgive us for the transgressions that, that we have, have done. And just to backtrack a little bit, you know, if you look in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 14, it says over there that not only the teachings of the Ten Commandments did God give the Jewish people at that time, but they were taught at that time and during the 40 years, Torah, which Moses learned from God and he disseminated amongst the 12 tribes who were there around and camped before the mountain and throughout the journeys into the wilderness. So we have a strong uh, a feeling, an ingrained natural ability to understand that there is a God and unfortunately uh, we, uh, many of us, are not as strong as we should be in keeping these uh, directives and commandments that were divinely given. But many are. But realize that everyone has that special affinity uh, for divinity and spirituality and the belief in God. God implanted that, especially among the Jewish people. He implanted, implanted that feeling of spirituality and godliness. But unfortunately, the evil inclination, whose job it is to fight uh, what is right, uh, and the atheistic Gentiles and their and their emphasis on quote-unquote entertainment and relaxation uh, without uh, mentioning the, the true God but uh, into falsifications of, of nothingness, uh, pursuit of wasting time and as a result many of our followers, many of the Jewish people throughout the ages have gone astray. Now we look at the Haredim uh, who want to stay away from, from all of these uh, Gentile um, uh, activities uh, which uh, are, are not helpful to the soul and lead us further and further astray. So they sort of ghettoize themselves and their school system is such that they emphasize learning Torah and Talmud, which is the oral explanation of the Torah, which is laced throughout the Talmud in many different ways, right? Laced throughout the Talmud in, ver in very many different um, types of uh, discussions that are, are brought down. And being that it became too cumbersome uh, to teach orally one generation to the next generation, they wrote the uh, Talmud, uh, first the Mishnah, uh, in, in, in writing, uh, and that was um, uh, compiled uh, by uh, Judah Hanasa, Hanasi in the year 70 Common Era, right? The Jews speak of um, not A.D. and 
uh, the, uh, the year of our Lord because the Christian God is not our God. So we don't use the word A.D., but we use uh, the term before the common era.